The new Republican speaker has the same problems as his replacement, ousted Republican speaker Kevin McCarthy. This is, of course, a time where we're starting a new year after last year had a very ineffective, unproductive Republican House. And then last night came this. Impeachment of Secretary Mayorkas. It looks like it's going to be closed, but they wouldn't be going to the vote if they didn't have the votes. A politically motivated sham impeachment. Unlike House Democrats, we take the use of impeachment extremely seriously. What this means at this time is that there are, without it being finished, more no's than yeses. On this vote, the yeas are 214 and the nays are 216. The resolution is not adopted. A fail and a shocking embarrassment to Republicans and the Speaker of the House. Don't bring a bill to the floor unless you know you have the votes. Sometimes uh, when you're counting votes and people show up when they're not expected to be in the building, it changes the equation. I was always going to vote on this piece of legislation. It's not our responsibility to let House Republicans know which members will or will not be present on the House floor. It was a mess what happened here. It was a mess. You know it's bad when they just have to admit it because you'd look even more bonkers, bananas, whatever, not admitting it. Republicans got a real set of brutal headlines today, including in friendly outlets like Fox News and the Wall Street Journal, because there's no other way to play it. Anyone who follows this, and maybe not everyone in the country is obsessed with floor votes, but it is a big deal in politics, government, and the news, this humiliating defeat for Speaker Johnson, who only got the gavel after Matt Gates and others ousted Kevin McCarthy, and now... And you can't make it up. Cue Matt Gates. I also wondered, like, wouldn't it have been nice to still have Kevin McCarthy in the House of Representatives? Never thought you'd hear me say that. But Kevin McCarthy, after being dislodged as speaker, took his marbles and went home. He would have been a reliable vote for impeachment. The abject selfishness of Kevin McCarthy contributed to this result. Failure, incompetence, criminations, and another set of GOP infighting. Very bad for the party politically, but for governing, if you care about that sort of thing, this also hobbles the Republican Party's ability to get its act together and work in any responsible way on issues they claim they care about, like the border. Again, maybe they don't care. We'll get into that. But all of this is now getting memed. You know, there are a lot of memes and tweets mocking this loss. I don't know if you watch Succession, and if you were familiar with Succession, but a lot of it, uh, people are playing when Shiv Roy, you know, looks at her... Her brothers and declares, boys, you're not good at this. Oh, f***ing hell. Boys, you're not good at this. <laughs> <laughs> so it brings to mind, you know, how do men know how to count? Let's just say the succession boy math was not working for the new Republican speaker. Now, we are joined by Professor Jason Johnson. Uh, what does this failure mean for the Republicans? <laughs> They're not competent. They're not serious people who want to continue with the succession theme. But also, it shows the weakness of Mike Johnson. Like, he, he can't, <laughs> to, to paraphrase, to paraphrase Sean Carter, he can't get his click together. If he can't flip a 62 to a 125 to a 250, if he can't get mm. to those numbers, right, then you're not a good leader. And that's why you have Matt Gates basically calling you out afterwards. This isn't boy math. This is simple math, and they don't get it. I didn't know you were going to quote Hove, but he also famously said, as did others, men lie. Women lie, numbers don't. numbers don't. The numbers don't lie, and the Speaker's job, above all, as former Speaker Pelosi mentioned, is to count the votes. So, politically, where is Mike Johnson with his team if he gets his whole team together and then tries to keep an eye on what the Democrats are doing? We saw, we saw Hakeem Jeffries say, this is your problem, this right. isn't our problem. Um, and, th and that... They, they don't know how to do that yet. Well, and, and here's the thing. And then in the end, you try and blame it on saying, well, they had extra people on their team. No, it's not that complicated, right? There have been many speakers with equally thin margins in the past that have managed to pass legislation. But what it's really about, Ari, is that nobody believes in what they're doing. No, nobody believes in getting rid of Mayorkas. Nobody believes that it makes sense. None of them are honest about what they really want to do about the border. So you think, in a way, also, their heart wasn't in the fight anyway. Their heart wasn't in the fight. Their heart wasn't in the fight. You know, again, when they get nervous, they tell the truth. They didn't really want to pass this. Wow. They didn't really want to pass this. Quoting the Grammys, that's a fresh quote. It's a fresh quote. Man. When I get nervous, <laughs> I tell the truth. Uh, look at the, the lack of productivity, because... If you're just tuning in now, if you don't watch the news regularly, right. you might say, okay, well, they, they messed up for a day. Right. It's just embarrassing. Well, no. Look at the 118th Congress. That's the most recent Congress. 
across many years, and this goes across both parties, uh, you can see a certain number of bills. Not all of them are super important, but there's a certain number of productivity going on. And now it has just completely crumpled last year, and this reinforces in the in the period, the first couple months where you might be doing things that they're failing. When you get really close to the election, it's well known you don't pass big bills. Right, and, and that's the problem. All right, look, this is, it's beyond incompetence. And I've been saying this, it's not hyperbolic. We have one semi-governing party, the Democrats, and the other, which is basically turned into a personality cult for Donald Trump. The fact that they can't pass basic things, and this is not new. We saw this when Trump was in office. Republicans controlled the House and Senate. They couldn't do anything about health care. They can't do things about taxes. They can't do things about the border. This party has Shown they can't really govern. They can complain, they can criticize the existing policy, but they can't pass anything. And that is an abject failure that I think voters should pay attention to in 2024. Yeah, and then on the issue of immigration, uh, there are changes that can be made. The Biden administration did the Obama thing. Right. It actually compromised, and people can debate how much they compromised. But they said, let's try to do something. And then when Republicans, and, and very recently, were told, Okay, we'll do your thing. They said, never mind, because we don't want to be seen doing anything. <laughs> well, they're not see Again, it's not just not being serious. It's the person who's like, look, I don't want Italian for dinner. I don't want Italian. I hate Italian food. I'm mm. like, okay, okay, fine. Well, what do you want? Well, I don't know. Well, it's not my job to tell you. That's what King Jeffries was just saying, right? They don't want to pass anything to help Biden. They don't want to pass anything because they don't have a better solution, and they don't want to pass anything. Or we see the same thing with abortion. For years, it was like, like the Joker says, it's like, you know, I'm chasing a car. They didn't want to solve abortion. They wanted abortion to run on. Now right. that abortion has been taken off the table, they don't know what they're doing. And that is going to be a problem. I wish more voters cared about actual policy passing because they'd recognize Republicans aren't delivering even on the things they promised. Well, and you mentioned the Italian food. If this is how Speaker Johnson's going to run the game for Republicans, then Hakeem Jeffries can keep moving like a real G and be silent like lasagna because you don't have to do anything if they're defeating themselves. Exactly. It's a circular firing squad because every time he fails, Matt Gates is going to come out and say he's not doing a good job. I mean, for, for Matt Gates to be calling the, the basically the old girlfriend and saying, gosh, I wish Kevin McCarthy was here. This is a guy you ran out on a rail, okay? Yeah. But it indicates the fact that his strength isn't there, their policies aren't committed, and they don't know what to do for the next six months because they don't want the news yeah. to be filled with court cases about Trump. They want to show they can do something. No, it's been a disaster. Uh, Jason, it's hard to talk you. You're a regular. We love you. And yet some would say, I'm not taking a position. Some would say we're topping Jason Johnson with Ava DuVernay next. I feel, I feel topped. You feel topped. Yeah, yeah, there feel we go. Top. Great to have you. Thank Ava's you, next. We'll be right back.